Hi and welcome to another story and today we have part seven of Head Kid by David Baddiel continuing from part four Head to Head Bracket Wood versus Oakcroft chapter 34 A Hubbub Okay Bracket Wood quiet down quiet down Mr Barrington was saying Mr Carter had called an emergency assembly Good morning Bracket Wood Good morning Mr Bummington said most of the school Unfortunately for Mr. Bummington, sorry, Barrington, the spirit of Mr. Carter, or rather, or rather, of Ryan as Mr. Carter, had taken root at Brackettwood. Those who were not shouting this rude version of his name back at him were making faces, laughing, blowing raspberries, eating sweets, jumping up and down, or simply not listening. Oh dear, 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 said Mr. Barrington. Shh, cried Mrs. Wang. Stop it, cried Miss Finch. Oh, my head, cried Miss Gerard. What are you? What are we going to do? said Mr. Barrington to the other teachers in desperation over the noise. Off head are coming back. We're all going to lose our jobs. Where's the head? asked Mrs. Wang. I don't know. He's vanished. He's turned the school into this and then just disappear. Whee! The very loud, very loud, high sound pierced the noise in the assembly hall. Everyone looked around to see Mr. Carter standing at the door, whistle in hand. Right, he said. We have work to do. We do, said Mr. Barrington. That's right, Mr. Barrington, he said, standing on the stage. Good morning, Brackettwood. Good morning, Mr. Carter, said the school, except for one person, who said Farter. Barry Bennett put his hand up. OK, Barry, very funny. <laughs> it does rhyme with my name, but don't do it again. It's not respectful. But I, though, I don't care what you thought. Don't do it again. Barry, a bit abashed, put his hand down. So look, guys, we have a problem. As some of you may remember, two grown-ups turned up yesterday, out of nowhere at lunchtime. Turns out they were off-head. Yeah. What's off-head, said Scarlet. Is it like Apple or Microsoft, asked Sterling. They're inspectors, uh, government inspectors, and basically they can shut the school down. Hooray, shouted Morris Forsett, grinning. No, not hooray. And it should be clear to all of you that it's not hooray by the fact that Morris decided to shout that. Morris stopped grinning. Look, I know it might not sound great. Uh, the school being shut down might actually sound great, but at the end of the day, we, I mean you, do all have to go to school somewhere. And if it wasn't here, it would probably be somewhere worse. And you know, it's not that bad here. What about the toilets? Yes, all right, Ellie, the toilets are terrible. And some of the teachers, of course, but apart from that, Mr. Barrington, Miss Gerard, Miss Finch and Mrs. Wang all looked at each other deadpan. It's all right. I mean, this is where we get to spend time with our friends, our... And here Mr. Carter searched out her face. Yes, there she was, sitting at the back of the room. Diona. Best friends. There was a hubbub following this, and a murmur. Voices could be heard saying, He's got a point, and I don't know if I'd like to go anywhere else, and we could clean the toilets ourselves. And in Morris Fawcett's case, Should I have said hip hip? But Mr. Carter didn't pay any attention to that. He kept on looking at Diona, whose face eventually broke into a smile. Chapter 35. All very well. OK, Mr. Carter, said Mr. Carter said to the gathered pupils. So what are we going to do? We've got a week just under. Well, said Mr. Barrington, we could, I, I mean, if you don't mind, Headmaster, you know, drop some of those rules you made on the first day, the ones about running in the corridor and turning around in class. Yes, OK. A groan went up from the hall. But I haven't even got my praise points for that yet, shouted Isla Fawcett. And I turned around 300 times in English alone. Does this mean I needn't have come to school in this? said Alfie Moore. Everyone looked over. Alfie was wearing a top hat with a picture of Mr Barrington on, except instead of his face under the hat, there was a cartoon of a monkey's very pink bum. Sorry, uh, but yes. Breaks my heart, said Mr Carter. Sadly, Alfie took it off. And, said Le Chiniqua, who had wandered in from the dining hall, we're going back to normal food because we've made a strawberry jelly pie with chips for lunch. Potato chips? No chocolate! Be in the shape of trip chips. No, Morris. Sorry. Yes, normal food again. Olivia Oliver approved. Another groan. Although, maybe keep the chocolate chips for dessert. The groan stopped. This is all very well, said a voice, but it's not going to be enough. It was Ryan. He got up from his cross-legged position and was now standing near the front of the assembly hall stage. None of that is going to save the school, he said. Chapter 36. Bring it on. How do you mean? said Mr Carter. Well, said Ryan, getting on the stage and going towards the lectern, the school was already under threat. Offhead had been unhappy with it for a while. Getting it back to how it was before isn't going to get it any more than another inadequate, which will still mean closure. It will. It will. Mr Carter frowned, his shoulders slumped. So what should we do? 
In any of, if, if any of the pupils or teachers at Bracket Wood thought it was a little odd at this point for the head teacher to be asking the naughtiest boy in the school what they should do, they didn't show it, possibly because things have been a little weird at the school for a while now. I think, said Ryan, that what's needed is an idea, an event, something that could be put on here for the benefit of the off-head inspectors that makes the school seem better than it normally is. Like what? Ryan laughed somewhat scornfully. It didn't sound like his normal laugh. <laughs> well, Mr Carter, I think that very much needs to come from you, seeing as you're the head teacher, aren't you? Mr Carter looked at him. He took a deep breath. Yes, yes I am. And so I have an idea. Oh, said Ryan nodding. Great. Looking forward to hearing this. What is it? It's... Yes. It's... Yes. Ryan stuck his hands behind his ears, pushing them forward. Really? I'm all ears. It's... Mr Carter looked out towards the full assembly hall. To throw it open to the floor, to the school, to the kids, and then choose the best idea. Right, said Ryan. Great, that's going to work. Anyone? We build a swimming pool in the playground and fill it with custard and then have a custard swimming race. OK, uh, thanks, Casper. Maybe something easier than that. Callington, Bar calling Barrington, Bummington, except we do it all at once. Yes, uh, you see, Morris, we've... Stop doing that. We're, we've stopped. Uh, just doing naughty stuff. Have we? When? It's going well, Mr Carter, isn't it? said Ryan. Debate! shouted a girl's voice. Diana's voice. Sorry, said Ryan. We kind of are, said Mr Carter. In a way, aren't we? He pointed at Ryan. Me and him, debating. No, you're not, she said. That's not debating. In a proper debate, there are two teams with, like, two people on them. They're called houses. And you have emotion, something serious and clever, like this house believes that the best things in life are free, or this house believes that freedom of speech is the basis of a just society. That's called the motion. And then one house argues for the motion and one against it. And then some judges decide who wins, which could be the off-head inspectors. A murmur went around the assembly hall in response to this. Mr Carter looked at Ryan. He raised an eyebrow. Ryan put his hand on his chin, stroking it. Not for the first time since he'd been transformed into her best friend, the head teacher inside Ryan thought that Deonna Baxter is really quite impressive. You know what, he said. That isn't a terrible idea. It's a brilliant idea. Well done, Deonna, Mr Carter grinned. But, continued Ryan, if we really want to stage something that will impress the off-head inspectors, I don't think a debate just between two teams made up of a bracket wood pupils is going to do it. I think we need to throw this and show this for th them this school can compete with other schools. I think we need to put on a debate where Bracket Wood takes on and beats another school, one that's been ranked good or even outstanding. Yes, said Mr Carter. Yes, said Mr Barrington, getting caught up in it all. Yes, said the children in the hall. Yay, said Miss Gerard with a yawn, slumping against the back wall. So, which school are you thinking of, said Mr Carter. I'm thinking, head teacher, of the only school in the area of a ranking of outstanding. Oakcroft. Everyone immediately went quiet. They all glanced at each other. The teachers frowned. Mr Carter gulped and said, Oakcroft? Ryan nodded. The really posh school that uh, has loads of money and brilliant results, and whose debating team, I believe, also won the National Debating Challenge three years running? Asked Mr Carter. Ryan nodded again. But what if we lose? Which, you know, is really possible. Won't that make it worse in, in front of the inspectors? Ryan nodded for the third time. I think that may be just the risk we have to take, he said. Mr Carter turned and looked with some fear towards Deonna, who was still standing at the back of the hall, her face a blank mask. But then gradually that blank mask turned into a face that was fierce, that was confident, that was defiant. Bring it on, she shouted. Chapter 37. Minor Royal Face. It was all hands on deck at Bracketwood that week. All the mad rules that Mr Carter had made since coming back from hospital were reversed. A new healthy lunch menu that actually did not did get approved by Jamie Oliver, Scarlett and Sterling sent it to him on Instagram, was brought in, in to replace the crazy sweet stuff, which meant that they had loads of cake mix left over. The tortoises were spruced up and any human underwear removed from them. Even the toilets were finally cleaned and a plumber brought in to unblock the three that had been blocked since 1999. It was amazing that they managed to get all this done so quickly, but a new spirit of cooperation seemed to have entered Bracketwood, with staff and pupils working happily together. Ryan, with Mr Carter, headed up a school council made up of the most enterprising, hard-working children there, and they helped to make sure that all the ideas of the smart new regime were actually enacted. Amazingly, Ryan and Mr Carter were actually getting on. It was as if they both realised something, which was that neither of them knew when or even if they could get back to their own bodies. But in the meantime, it wouldn't help either of them for the school to be shut down, so they might as well work together. 
And since they were working together, Ryan had come along on the day when Mr. Carter and Diana had gone to meet Oakcroft's head teacher. Come, said Miss, Mrs. Valentine Fine, OBE. Mr. Carter looked a bit confused. They were standing outside her wood panelled door at the end of a long wood panelled corridor. Although there were children milling about nearby, it was terrifically silent. There was no shouting or screaming, no bumps or bangs from anyone being tripped over, or drinks spilling, or locks being slammed. It sounded, in other words, very different from anywhere at Bracket Wood. She means in, said Ryan. Yeah, posh people j sometimes just say come when they mean come in, said Diana. Come! I think we'd better go in, said Ryan. Inside it was even quieter than outside. The room was covered with a very plush carpet. The wood panelling was even more woody and polished than outside. It felt like the sort of room where there should be no sound except for the ticking of a grandfather clock. But since there wasn't one of those, there was no sound at all. It was broken by, ah, it's the Bracket Wood Gang. Hooray! Oh, blimey, said Mr. Carter, on realising it was Mrs. Valentine Fine, OBE, speaking from behind her desk. Well, a bit more than speaking. I beg your pardon? Well, I, I thought you were just speaking like that because we were on the other side of the door, but it turns out you speak like that all the time. Speak like what all the time? Mrs. Valentine Fine, OBE, was a frightening looking woman. For a start, her hair, which she wore in a kind of standing up wavy block, was bright orange. Similar in tone to Donald Trump's skin. Although not physically that large, she seemed to take up an enormous amount of space in the room. She wore a bright red dress that clashed very badly with her hair, and on her bosom, can I say bosom? Oh, well, I have, rested a pair of glasses on a chain. She also didn't seem to know when she was shouting. Uh, Mrs. Valentine Fine, said Ryan smoothly. OBE, said Mrs. Valentine Fine, OBE. I beg your pardon. Uh, Mrs. Valentine Fine, as I'm sure most well-informed people know, said a voice off to one side, has an honour bestowed personally by Her Majesty the Queen. Blessed be she for services to education. Ryan and Mr Carter looked over. Standing to one side were a girl and a boy. They were presumably year sixes, but looked much older. The girl was tall with a sharp beaky nose and short hair worn in a stern side parting. She was standing with her arms folded, staring directly at them. The boy, even taller, had long blonde hair and was standing with one arm against the wall of the head teacher's room, as if he was a model. Yeah, she got it for like being amazeballs at teaching stuff. I mean, my great aunt really told her she, who, her she was like, like the best. Your great aunt, said Mr. Carter. Oh, Soz, my great aunt is like her madge, like Liz, too, like send her victorious, happy and whatevs. And, said the girl, as Mrs. Carter and Ryan stared open mouthed, Mrs. Valentine Fine OBE therefore prefers to be addressed as Mrs. Valentine Fine OBE. I do, that is correct. Thank you, Belinda. Thank you, Toby, said Mrs. Valentine Fine OBE, picking up her glasses off her bosom. Oh, no, I've said it again, and putting them on her nose as if to peer more carefully at these strange visitors. Now, what can we do for you? Well, said Ryan, I, I think our head can explain. Can't you, Mr Carter? That bloke is the Queen's nephew, said Mr Carter. Great nephew, apparently. Anyway, can't you, Mr Carter? What? Oh, heavens, explain what, what we're doing here. Oh, yeah. Mr Carter turned to Mrs Valentine Fine at OBE. We'd like to challenge you to a debate. Sorry? You versus us. A debate. At our place. Monday next week. Judged by Offhead. <laughs> what do you say? Mrs Valentine Fine OBE frowned. She looked over at Belinda and Toby, who frowned as well. Then she said, Well, I think what we would say is... And together they all went... <laughs> they all finished at the same time, which was quite impressive. Mr Carter and Ryan looked at each other. What? Just that, said Mr Carter, laughing. <laughs> Although this time they didn't finish on quite the same beat. Ha 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 ha! Like, ha! went Toby. I'm so sorry, Mr. Carter, I don't mean to laugh, but this school has won the National Schools Debating Championship 15 years running, and Bracket Wood is, well, Bracket Wood, you know? Mr. Carter looked at her. Inside, the boy who'd gone to Bracket Wood for the last six years and who had spent most of that time pranking teachers and making fun of it felt strangely angry. No, he said, I don't know what you mean. And neither, said Ryan, standing by side, side by side, side him, do I. Mrs. Valentine, fine, OBE, took off her glasses and replaced them on her you-know-where. She raised an eyebrow, unused to being challenged in any way. She stood up as if she was going to tell them both off. But before she could open her mouth to speak, Belinda said, What about you, Diana? Everyone looked around. At that point, Mr. Carter realised that Diana had not said a word since they'd come into the office. She was deliberately looking down, not at Belinda, who continued with a sly smile on her face. 
Dionna, it is you, isn't it? Dionna Baxter, who used to go here? Oh, what bells, said Toby. The scholarship girl. Is that her? The one with the mum from Nigeria? <laughs> but not like a princess or anything, just literally from Nigeria. <laughs> Dionna, how wonderful. And you, of course, were actually a junior member of our debating team before you sadly had to leave. Yes, that was very sad, said Belinda, but she didn't look at all sad. Are you happier now, Diana? at, what's it called again, Tobes? Plackett Hood? Yes, are you happier at Plackett Hood? Mr Carter and Ryan exchanged glasses, glances, but Diana looked up slowly and met Belinda's eye and said calmly, I am Belinda, thank you, perfectly happy, although, yes, said Belinda, looking as if she was eager to hear this, not as happy as I will be when me and the rest of the Brackett Wood debating team take you and minor royal face here down. See you next week. With that, she was gone, through the oak panelled door, which was kind of awkward for Mr Carter and Ryan, who were left there, not quite knowing what to do. Eventually, Ryan coughed and said, <clears throat> OK, uh, yes, well, there we are. Goodbye, then. Yeah, said Mr Carter. Bye. And the two of them shuffled out. Chapter 38. P.S. Bum Bum Bum. After Mr Carter, Diana and Ryan had left Oakcroft, nothing happened for a bit. They thought that maybe Mrs Valentine Fine OBE had decided not to pick up the challenge, but then a message came through to the school by email. This was it. To headteacher at bracketwoodschool.com from Mrs Valentine Fine OBE at, at, OBE at oakcroft.edu. Dear Mr Carter, it was very kind of you to come to my office yesterday and challenge our school to a debate. We have considered it and our answer is yes. Our only stipulation is that the motion should be this house believes that Brackenwood School is rubbish. Our school will be proposing the motion and you will be opposing it. I hope this is suitable for your purposes. Yours truly, Mrs Valentine Fine OBE. After he read this, Mr Carter thought about writing back a very rude message indeed. It occurred to him that since he was now, as far as most people knew, a grown-up, he could use some very grown-up swear words without anyone telling him off. However, he talked it over with Diana, who said, yeah, you're right. They're just taking the mickey. Even more reason to wipe the floor with them. So, with her looking over his shoulder, he wrote back saying, To Mrs Valentine Fine OBE at oakcroft.edu From headteacher at bracketwoodschool.com Dear Mrs Valentine Fine OBE, thanks for email. Yeah, okay, that motion is fine. More than fine. Brilliant. Yours sincerely, Mr Carter. P.S. Bum 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 P.P.S. Sorry, I think my computer has been hacked by your mum. Diana did think about saying to him, might be better if you cut the PS and the PPS, but then thought, nah. They laughed a lot and carried on laughing right up until they realised that they would have to stage some auditions to find a second member of the debating team apart from Diana. Chapter 39. That bad. This house believes. My house. My house doesn't believe anything. It's made of brick. Diana looked despairingly at Mr Carter, who looked back and tried to smile as if things were not so bad but it did look as if things were pretty bad. Morris Fawcett was the 15th child who'd come in following the putting up of a sign in the corridor that said, Debating team auditions, 1.15pm. And it wasn't going well. No, Morris, said Diana. It's not your actual house. Well, why did you say it was? I didn't. I said this house. Oh, Morris frowned and looked around. It's not a house, though. It's a school. Diana put her head in her hands. Mr Carter said, OK, thanks, Morris. Uh, we'll let you know. You'll let me know what? Just go. Morris nodded as if he heard these words often and did so. What are we going to do, said Diana after the door had shut. Well, he isn't the cleverest people in the school. You can say that again. Well, he isn't the clever. Please don't do that joke. No, fair enough, but some of the others haven't been that bad. Diana looked down at the notes she'd been taking. Scarlet and Sterling have created a debate app that could do it for us. When asked, will it be ready by Monday, they replied, no, we're waiting for legal permission which won't come through until we're 16. In nine years' time for Sterling. Yes, but Malcolm Bailey, very good on impressions of animals, not so good at debating. Hmm, Alfie Moore seems to think he can win just by shouting. I'll do what I like. Yes, that was odd. Casper, reception, mainly interested in singing the wheels on the bus. She looked up. I've written possible and a question mark next to him. Things are that bad. Yeah, OK, you're right. They've all been terrible. The debate is on Monday. That's when Offhead is coming back and today is Friday. What are we going to do? She shook her head. Then the door opened and through the door came Ryan. How's it going, he said. Mr Carter and Diana looked at each other and smiled. Chapter 40. A bit of a problem. 
I'm still not sure about this, said Ryan, as he and Diana waited in a little room behind the assembly hall stage on Monday afternoon. Oh, not now, Mr Carter, she replied. We've been over this. And they had. Ryan, or rather Mr Carter inside Ryan, had been very against the idea. The idea, that is, of him being the second player on the Brackettwood debating team, which had occurred to Diana and Mr Carter simultaneously as he'd walked through the door. His point was that it was cheating, that he, though presently occupying the body of an 11-year-old boy, was actually a 43-year-old man, a very strict, play-by-the-rules, 43-year-old head teacher. In fact, and so he was not comfortable with the idea that they would have an unfair advantage. Diona had answered by looking up the rules of debating, which, it was true, contained nothing about a member of a school team being an adult in reality. Mr Carter, in Ryan's body, counted that the age limit was 12. Ryan, in Mr Carter's body, counted that he, Ryan, was 11. Mr Carter, you got the idea, reply, who, you get the idea, replied, yes, but I'm actually me, Mr Carter. And Ryan had said, well, Mr C, I think there's a little bit of all of us in all of us. What's that supposed to mean, said Mr Carter in Ryan's body. Yes, what does it mean, says Diana? Is it a Taylor Swift lyric? Well, OK, maybe. I wasn't really thinking about it, what it meant when I said it, said Ryan in Mr Carter's body. But, he continued, looking very closely at the body that had previously been his, I'm beginning to wonder where I start and you end, whether we aren't just turning into each other. Well, he'd, when he'd said this, both of them felt a little frightened. So maybe, just to ward off the idea that this was it, that Mr Carter and Ryan had swapped places permanently, Mr Carter, in Ryan's voice, obviously said, OK, OK, I'll be on the debating team, which might be why he was now saying he wasn't sure about it. After all, it wasn't a very strong argument, which is a bit of a problem when you're about to take part in a debate. And that is where we leave part seven of Head Kid by David Baddiel. I'll be back soon with the next part of this fantastic story and lots more stories and videos coming your way very soon. If you'd like to subscribe or hit a like, that's always appreciated. Thanks for listening, guys. Take care. Bye bye.